I'm going to display a set of pictures on the screen. Can you tell me if you can see some kind of pattern amongst these pictures? Yes. All the pictures on the left are a little different from the ones on the right. All the pictures on the left are living organisms, while all the ones on the right are non-living things. Right? Now that brings us to this question of what makes something living? Right? What are some characteristics of living organisms? And that's what we'll discuss in this video. We'll discuss eight characteristics of living organisms. First one, growth. Growth is seen across all living organisms in the universe. Look at this plant. Don't you think the sapling is becoming larger and larger with time, right? Or a cub slowly becomes a full-grown lion, right? Growth is the increase in mass and size of an organism. And that is characteristic across all living organisms. So that's point number one for our characteristics. Let's go to the second point. Look at this picture. I can see a child being fed food, right? Food is the source of energy. If the child does not eat food, the child cannot grow, right? If the child does not eat food, the child cannot get energy, which is necessary for growth. So if the child does not eat food, the child cannot grow. Similarly with plants, leaves make food, green leaves make food for the plant, right? And, and so energy is necessary for growth of plants and animals, and also for other functions. For example, you need energy to walk, you need energy for digestion, you need energy for everything. So energy is consumed by plants and animals alike for growth and other bodily functions. Okay, that was our second characteristic. Now let's move to the third characteristic. Look at this boy. What do you see him doing? Yes, he's breathing. Breathing in scientific terms is called respiration. Respiration is the exchange of gases with the atmosphere. So this boy is breathing in and breathing out. So when he breathes in, he takes in oxygen. And when he breathes out, he expels carbon dioxide. There's something you should note. Plants also perform respiration. Plants also take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Okay, let's go to our characteristic number four, which is excretion. Excretion is the removal of waste from the body. Waste can be removed in the form of urine or feces or sweat or it could even be expelling waste gases like carbon dioxide, what we just discussed. Okay, so here's a picture of cow dung, the waste from a cow, which has been expelled out. And here's a man who is sweating. Wait a minute. I've talked about excretion only from animals. Do plants also excrete things? Yes, they do. The tree bark is an interesting way by which plants can excrete out waste. All the waste is sent to the tree bark, and then the tree bark can slowly fall off, and all the waste goes out of the body. Okay, so that was excretion in plants and animals. The next characteristic we'll discuss is response to stimuli. Stimuli is nothing but a change in the environment. Now, there could be different types of changes in the environment, and we would usually respond to those changes. And that's basically response to stimuli. For example, if someone pinches you or you pinch yourself, there's a change in the environment in terms of touch, right? And that will cause you to react. Right? If someone pinches me, I would most probably yell at them. Right? And if someone in the background is yelling, maybe the change in the environment in terms of sound may make me block my ears. So, do you see the point? We're responding to changes in the environment. Right? Okay. Now, we do know that animals respond to stimuli. If you kick a tiger or a lion or a dog, you will get a fitting response. Right? But what about plants? Do plants also respond to stimuli? Can you pause for a moment and think about one example where plants respond to stimuli? Okay, now there are many ways by which plants can respond to some kind of change in the environment. Let me show you one example. I'm sure you've all seen this plant, the touch me not plant. This was my favorite plant. The moment you touch the leaves, the leaves just shut up, right? And that's why we call it touch me not, right? And this is a classic example of how plants can also respond to stimuli. Okay. Number six, reproduction. Reproduction is basically when organisms create new organisms like themselves. That's called reproduction. Let me give you an example. Cell division. This is the simplest way by which an organism can perform reproduction. 
This is seen usually in really small organisms which are single-celled organisms or unicellular organisms like this one here. This cell will just expand a little and slowly split into two. Done. Now, this is an animation, this is not a video, but it's pretty amusing, right? How a cell can just split into two. You can see this kind of reproduction in things like amoeba. Those reproduce like this. What about other organisms? Let's look at a few more examples. Some organisms reproduce by producing eggs, like birds. Here in this video, you can see a small bird just hatched out of the egg. What are some other ways of reproduction? How do plants reproduce? Plants reproduce often through seeds. Look at this time-lapse video, a really fast-forwarded video. Those are seeds slowly coming out of the ground and becoming plants. Amazing, isn't it? Okay, so that was reproduction. Now let's discuss our seventh characteristic, that is a definite lifespan. If you look at the human race, you would find that most humans live from around 70 to 75 years, right? And that's like the lifespan of a human. Similarly, if you look at a banyan tree, you would find that banyan trees live usually from around 200 to 250 years or so. And uh, similarly, every organism has some kind of lifespan. For example, an amoeba, those single-celled organisms, like the one we saw that split into two, those live for a few days. So different organisms live for different periods of time. And that definite lifespan is a characteristic of living organisms. Okay, number eight, a cellular structure. No, this is not about cell phones. Cellular refers to the smallest unit of living organisms, which is called a cell. So that is the fundamental unit of living organisms. Let me show you a few pictures. If you zoomed into an onion peel, this is how it would look. Can you see these, uh, you know, boundaries here like this? These are the boundaries to the cells. These are actually the cells of the onion peel. Or if you zoomed in with a microscope into the cheek cells, this is how they would look. Yes, these are human cheek cells. Can you see those cells there? Right? So these are cells. All living organisms are made up of fundamental units called cells. And that is a characteristic of all living organisms across the world. Okay, so to summarize, the eight characteristics exhibited by living organisms are growth, consumption of energy, respiration, excretion, response to stimuli, reproduction, a definite lifespan, and a cellular structure. That's it for this video.